Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, right here on the GSMC Podcast Network. Obviously, you know what we talk about here on this podcast, we talk about all things basketball. Obviously, thank you for joining me for another show, as we will continue to break down updates on the NBA starting to be more and more traction towards the season actually starting. Also, we'll also talk about potential playoff matchups. Obviously, if they go right to the regular season, I'm going to break down the current playoff matchups that would currently be if the playoffs did start today. And also other things around the league and etc. Obviously, here on this podcast... You know, we're like I said, we like to try to hit things, we like to have fun, like to have discuss some things, have discussions here. Obviously, hope all of you are staying safe out there during COVID still. You know, we're we're, we're still doing what we gotta do out here to stay alive and, and keep it up and just have a good time with our lives. So, you know, I'm glad y'all allow me to be a part of your day, uh listening to me, allowing me to to bring my wisdom to you guys, my opinion, and and you know, that's all you can really ask for. That's really all you can ask for when doing the podcast like this uh, and everything like that. But so we're going to get right into it. So in terms of updating with the league, right now the NBA has reportedly have two spots that they are looking at basically putting the games. Disney World in Orlando and in Las Vegas. Obviously, these have been the two cities that have been rumored for the longest time. These are the two cities that people have said have been in the front running for the lead for play games to be played. Obviously, the big question was were the NBA trying to do two? And, you know, they, I think they're coming to the decision on both, on two places. I think that, you know, it's important that when we look at the places they do it, Somebody put a tweet out earlier that Orlando, Orlando Disney World is a huge place. Because, like, one thing that's been discussed is that Jared Dudley said a couple of days ago that players will be allowed to leave the bubble, which is the place they will be staying at primarily. And, obviously, that's raised questions. Would that be a good idea? Would that be healthy? Would that be something you want to risk, technically risk with the players? Now, obviously, I think players understand the seriousness of this. So you could see, I could see teams coming into it like, listen, guys, I know we can leave, but let's try not to leave if we don't have to, you know, because obviously you can, we don't, we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we could come back from somewhere and have COVID and give it to the rest of the team. Cause obviously that wouldn't do good for us. Could shut down the playoffs, could, 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 could cost us a playoff series. We, we, we don't know. So let's play it safe. The leaders are going to come out and be leaders and make sure they do what they got to do to make sure that no one's in danger or at risk. So obviously that's what, what, what the best leaders teams would do and so on and so forth. And, you know, obviously, like I said, the league has been gaining traction on a returning season. So with more of the things that you start to hear from the coming days, every day when it comes to the NBA, it does sound like we are slowly getting closer to that point. And if we do get to that point, obviously, if when that when, if that announcement comes, because like we can't make it a foregone conclusion, if that announcement comes, we know a lot of people will be very excited. They'll be very happy. They'll 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 be ecstatic with joy because the NBA season is back. And listen. You've already heard the plan, which I'll talk more in detail about, you know, next segment. 
They already have a plan in place about, you know, how long they want training to be and then they'll start the season, et cetera, et cetera. So really you're just you're just looking at the situation as a matter of putting everything together to then make it all work out for everybody involved. So I think that's kind of the biggest thing I think for a lot of people right now. With with this whole situation with the NBA returning and making sure that, you know, player safety is obviously number one. You don't want to potentially put the players at risk. Because obviously put the players at risk. That could lead to another cancellation, which probably would probably mean the season will be canceled permanently. There'll be no champion crown. And now it's just like, listen, you've already heard the losses that some teams, some organizations, some leagues will take if they don't have games with no fans and et cetera. At least the NBA could still play games and get that TV revenue. But if they can't do that, that's even more of a loss on their end. So which could severely affect the salary cap for next season. And obviously if that happens, like I said, that will be less money to give out in free agency when the offseason does start up. And it just it just it just doesn't look a good thing. It just looks like a lot of things are gonna go down. So clearly, you know, like I said, a lot of decisions have to be made from the NBA's perspective. I'm sure they're gonna go out there and try to make the best decisions they think they can for the team. And they're gonna basically hope for the best. So um We'll have to keep stay tuned for that and keep an eye on that situation. Obviously, I'll try to keep you guys updated as much as possible through the entire situation. <laughs> um, now I'm moving to some other news. So the Nets reportedly are eyeing shooting guard from the Washington Wizards, Bradley Beal, the real deal Beal. Obviously. Spencer Dinwiddie actually had a hilarious uh, response to that, obviously put, posting a GIF. Because obviously people would think, oh, if that happens, you'd be including the trade, clearly. I, I could see that happening. I could see them making that move. But I know what they would probably give up. They'd probably give up Chris Lever and Spencer Dinwiddie in that trade for Bradley Beal. I think that would be the most c- clear thing here. Maybe even a pick two. Because then if you get that, you have yourself a big three. In Bradley Beal, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant. And then Brooklyn, especially next year, since that's supposed to be the year they're supposed to really like take off. You're going to have three players who can all drop 30 any night, 40 any night, and take over games. So, if the Nets were able to pull this off, I think obviously they would be an instant title contender. Even more than some people thought, even if it was just Kyrie and KD. And, you know, obviously Bradley Bill now gets to be in a winning situation. And if he's in that situation, then obviously he's going to be able to play in some more meaningful games that he hasn't played in since like mid 2000s. And, you know, obviously the Wizards, even in that trade, if you look at it, aren't left that badly if they were able to get maybe LeVert and Spencer in there. Because if you think about it, you got John coming back, you still got Spencer, and you got Chris. If you really wanted to, maybe you could do a, a three, two, three guards starting right there with your rookie from last year. Uh, I mean, the Wizards would still have some talent on the team to work with. So it's really a beneficial tr- trade for both teams. There really wouldn't be one team that would be like, wow, they really suffered a loss here. But that's only if that's the type of trade that would actually be able to get pulled off. But obviously, you know, like I said, the Nets probably are looking at, listen, we're trying to make a championship Roman KD gets back and we want to have the team around him to do it. Obviously, we may not know if Kyrie can stay healthy, but if we be able to add a guy like Bradley Bill, we know, okay, Kyrie may not be here, but we still got a second guy who can come in, have a big game, be that Robin to Kevin Durant, and still be able to at least put us in position to still win. And I think, obviously, that would be a very smart move on their side of things if they were able to pull off a trade. Now, obviously, we'll have to see. If the Wizards are willing to budge off of Bradley Bill, they may not be willing to budge off of him. You know, so we'll have to see. I mean, obviously, they, they, we've been knowing it for a while that they'd rather move John Wall than they would Bradley Bill. But Bradley Bill has the better contract out of the two. So, obviously, that's why that hasn't necessarily happened. And, obviously, we've seen the frustration that Bradley Bill has gone through during this past season. Obviously, with the Wizards not being a good team this year, him putting up great performances and still losing... Obviously, for any player that can bother you, that can get to you, that can that can really 
get after you because you don't want that type of situation. And so it's just going to be very interesting to see what happens moving forward with Brooklyn. And, and, and if, if that rumor that we're hearing now really does come to fruition and they do heavily pursue Bradley Bill from the Washington Wizards, as that obviously will create some exciting, exciting stuff for the NBA season next year already. But coming up next, James Harden says he will return when the virus has calmed down. My thoughts. Plus, I'll give you more of an update on when the league looks to be back at. It looks like around mid-June is when they'll start allowing training camp to happen again for all the teams that are in the playoffs. All that right here and more on the podcast. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing, and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC football podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment we discussed the NBA picking two places that look like the front runners to hold and host the bubble for games like I said I feel like Vegas is for the Western Conference and Orlando will be for the Eastern Conference for both sides of the playoffs here I feel like everything says they're going to probably go right into playoffs so they, they, they found their top two places which is Vegas and Orlando also we discussed Bradley Bill potentially going to the to to the Brooklyn Nets as Brooklyn is reportedly eyeing acquiring Bradley Beal when this season is over and adding him to Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving making a big three that can compete for a championship next year in Brooklyn and potentially bring a championship to New York City and Brooklyn. So now we're gonna get some other news. James Harden says that. He would play this season, coming back from COVID, if it was safe. And what he means is if if COVID has calmed down to a minimum. So some people think, well, COVID is not necessarily calmed down to a minimum. And probably in about three weeks it won't be. So would James potentially not play? Would he say, 
listen, I want to join you guys for the playoffs, but I'm not going to play with COVID like this. Some people think that maybe, you know, after James hears what the NBA does and the plans and the guidelines, he might sit there and say, okay, I can work with this. I'll come back and play. Uh, obviously, like I said, he's one of the, obviously some players have spoken out during this time talking about them playing in COVID, just making sure like, hey, are we going to be safe if I, if I play? Because obviously you don't want to go back and then put yourselves at a high level of risk to play basketball because you've obviously heard some players are just like, is it is it really worth it at the end of the day sometimes from some players? And, you know, so obviously player safety is clearly number one in the league as it should be. You know, it shouldn't should not not be number one. So obviously that's going to bring and raise a lot of questions. So... It's it's just going to be a very interesting situation overall to me. To see what happens, you know, because like I said, you might hear more players. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they bring the season back. You hear more players maybe going out and speaking their mind on what they think, saying, you know what, I don't know if I feel comfortable because that because that is something that could be a question that's raised. Could players potentially sit out because they're not comfortable? And if it's an important player, how would that affect your team? Like, it's one thing if the 15th man doesn't. But if a starter doesn't, it's like, dang. You know, like, kind of need you. <laughs> and, and now, that could hurt our playoff chances of potentially even coming back and being able to win. So, obviously, that would be a very big a big deal if that actually ended up becoming an issue. And, obviously, with Harden's comments, people are starting to chatter. Some people are starting to wonder. You know, would Harden be maybe one of those players to create a domino effect? Like, you know, because if James Harden says he ain't going to play, you're going to have to see other players like, dang, James ain't playing? If he ain't playing, then shoot, I don't need to play. <laughs> and then that would, come, that would kind of somewhat ruin, you know, the NBA comeback if your best players aren't even coming back. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how it how it ends up, how it works out, and how everything goes. Like I said, I'm sure these are still ongoing discussions. They're ongoing conversations. And there's no reason for us to necessarily be underconfident about what's going to happen. They're just going to come out there and do what they can. So, But also, update with the league. So obviously I've been talking about there's been momentum building towards the league coming back and resuming their season. So the plan looks like right now what we're hearing is that the NBA will come back in mid-June. They will have three weeks of camp. I mean, even though teams are starting to get together now and work out, they're going to have three weeks of official camp. And then in mid-July, they will go ahead and just go right into the playoffs with the first games of every series and then do that for the entire playoffs, which would probably lead the season ending since it starts in July Ending around Labor Day weekend. If, if, depending on how fast. Now that's one thing I'm intrigued by. Would they keep every series as a seven game series because of how long those series can extend? Cause obviously, cause I, I think if it's with the bubble, you would probably want to do with one game. You would probably want to alternate every game you can. You have two games to this today, two games the next day, and two games. So it's a day off for each game. Because you're not really switching, you're not traveling, you're kind of in the same place. After you play your game, you go back and rest, you come back, rest day, boom, play the next game. And you just do that, obviously, till the Eastern Conference Finals when you only have, like, two matchups left and then finals, you know, you go from there. Do that. Seven-game series can take up to 14 days. So... If that happened in the second round, I took that same game, you're already wasting a month. And then you're trying to get it done maybe by Labor Day. So I, to me, I would not be shocked if potentially the NBA maybe shortens these series to five games. It's something nobody talks about, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was something they did decide to do to potentially get the season through sooner. But we don't know. They might keep the seven games and say, you know what, as long as it gets done in September, 
mid September, we we can work with this, and we could go somewhere with this. Because, like I said, these are also a part of the things that you really have to decide. Obviously, teams are expecting guidelines from the NBA clearly on what they can and cannot do, what is safe and what is not clearly. Because obviously, you don't want to put your players at risk or team or personnel or anybody at risk during that time. So, you got to make sure you have the right protocols in place so that way. You don't have to worry about players and teams dealing with the intentional fact of, man, you know, just because this protocol wasn't in place, oh, it means we may be able to do this, and then you do it, and you get COVID, team gets COVID, so the season's canceled. Because honestly, that's the biggest thing right now. If, if people get COVID during this, it's going to really make the NBAs may say, okay, we even did the bubble and people got COVID we might have to just go ahead and just say, okay, it's over. We're done with the season. So obviously that's going to be something that a lot of people are going to pay attention to. A lot of people are going to look into, and a lot of people are going to wonder about moving forward because obviously it's something that, you know, people are going to be looking at with the NBA. But I mean, listen, the NBA has been praised for how they've been handling the situation. A lot of people feel like the NBA has handled the situation fantastically. And, you know, they the people very much have confidence in Adam Silver and the league to come out with, with the right guidelines and the right rules and the right situation to help, you know, make this a successful adventure and not put players at risk in the long term when it when it when it gets on into the future you know it definitely helps with that for sure so obviously that's going to be a big thing again moving forward moving on into the season if the season does indeed actually end up coming back and them having the season in these two those distinct locations camps playoffs we can crown a champion we can see what happens we can go from there so there's some things to look forward to there's some things to look forward to for sure but coming up next tom thibodeau bowling over options around the league is trying to figure out where he should go and coach next We'll also talk about Paul Pierce versus LeBron. As Paul Pierce came out this week and said LeBron is not in his top five. Obviously, people look at the rivalry that LeBron and Paul Pierce have had and said that's why he refuses to give LeBron that top spot. And it, Paul Pierce's reason was very interesting. You're going to hear all that here and more on the podcast. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing, and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code. 
health and wellness. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, we discussed the league looking to target June to bring back workouts in the league. But also, we they also are targeting July, mid-July to start the playoffs. So obviously the league is starting to get, like I said, many things in place for an NBA return as momentum towards a comeback for the for the season is looking very promising but also we discussed James Harden coming out and saying he will return and play if it is safe and COVID has calmed down to a minimum which it probably won't be but maybe after he hears what the league will do to help them be comfortable he might be willing to look past that and say you know what I feel like the league has the best interest in mind and will put me in position to be able to do it so that's going to be the thing moving forward. But now we're going to talk about some more news around the league. And Tom Thibodeau, obviously Tom Thibodeau, uh, wasn't didn't coach his last year after being let go by the Timberwolves. His last job has been looking around the league, looking at all of his options. Obviously, Houston was an option. Brooklyn was an option as those are two jobs that look to be open because Mike D'Antonio's contract is up after this year. Plus, there have been talks about being Tony since he is older that would it be a good idea for him to come back and coach at his age and potentially take that risk? Even though he has said he is determined to coach still into the future. So, obviously, this is going to provide a lot of interesting things here. Um... Listen, like I said, Tom Thibodeau, he's entering a territory for me where he's going to keep getting jobs. And it seems like at first with him, the team was good. But when you're but when you when you're asking him to sustain a long-term success, the team starts to fail. You heard Chicago, he wore players out. Some people, like I said, even went to the point of blaming him for Derrick Rose's injuries. Obviously, other two places he stopped to still didn't have to the up level of the same success that he had. Obviously, like I said, in Minnesota, his best year was when they were able to get Jimmy Butler on there with Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins. But even that still, first round exit. So obviously, you could tell, you know. He has a decent track record, but he's kind of like I said, he's on edge. Where if he maybe has another disappointing stop, he's going to enter that head coaching purgatory where, like, yeah, you can hire him, but he doesn't necessarily have the history of taking your team to the next level. And if you want someone who's going to take your team to the next level, is taking Tom Thibodeau the best option potentially for your team in that situation? Or are you okay with the team potentially being mediocre or good for a year or two years? I mean, that's just some of the things that you have to face. I mean, listen, obviously, both situations are playoff teams. So he's not going into a situation where he's rebuilding any rosters. He's going into two situations where these teams are playoff ready. Now, can you get him to that next step of championship? Obviously, Houston, you know, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, 
Brooklyn, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, superstars all over the place. Which pair of superstars would he want to work with the most? Which organization does he feel most comfortable with? Obviously, you can still sit here and say the Eastern Conference is easier to go through than the Western Conference. Where in the Western Conference, he has to go through the Lakers and the Clippers and the Denver Nuggets and then the Golden State Warriors if they, when they get healthy. And, you know, the Utah Jazz. Where more, like on the East, we, the thing is, is that you don't know truly how good Miami is. But you do know the Raptors are a good team, not a great team. And Milwaukee's the only team that you maybe consider great in the league. And that would be your toughest test as far as we know at this current moment. Outside of Boston, who also is an underrated team to me, who could make a playoff, playoff run too. So, like I said, they have decisions they need to make. I'm sure Tom Thibbs is looking over his options very diligently. And, and this, trying to decide what is the best move for me at the end of the day. So, Paul Pierce came out this past week and said that LeBron James is not in his top five. Obviously, this started uproar on Twitter, social media, because everybody remembers the rivalry that LeBron and Paul Pierce had when LeBron was on Cleveland at first, and obviously they had created the big three and they had bounced LeBron out of the playoffs. Then obviously when he was in Miami. And Paul Pierce had a very interesting reason for why he did not put LeBron in his top five. And he said this. He said, well, LeBron has never built a team from the ground up. Like he did. Remember, Boston, Paul Pierce was there when Boston was at its worst. And he stayed. And they eventually got talent in there. And boom, they won a championship. Where... LeBron went to Cleveland. They won, but they couldn't win the big one. And they were bounced out by him after he got that big three assembled. And then went to Miami to win a championship. Came back to Cleveland after they had got some players. And then won a championship. So he, he's basically saying, LeBron never went through the grind and then won a championship. He had to go somewhere else, then come back with the team in better shape and get better players around him to then win a championship. And so, with that being known, here's one thing I think Paul Pierce has to understand about this. So many players do these top five, top six lists based off a criteria they set. So obviously, Paul Pierce, he's like, to me, if you build a team up from the ground up is important to me. Some people may not put that in their you know, category. But we can make the argument LeBron did. Every time he played for Cleveland, he built that city up. Not just the team. Remember, Cleveland was not good without LeBron. LeBron made them relevant. LeBron got him to playoffs. LeBron got him to a finals. Obviously, second time around, got him a championship. To me, you can't sit here and say a guy didn't build the team up just because he didn't stay all the way through it and took a break in between. Because he did give them a lot of years and he made them successful. And he helped the city. So to me, I don't think you can sit here and tell me that LeBron does not deserve that type of credit that he has warranted throughout his career for what the contributions he has done. You know? I think you you have to give him credit for everything that he has done. And like I said, a lot of people feel like Paul Pierce is also saying this because of obviously his career with LeBron. Him and LeBron didn't always get along on the court. And so maybe some of his personal relationship was affecting also how he views LeBron James. Obviously, that's something that some people think potentially could be what or why this happened. So, you know, clearly, you know, with that, it's it's just a very interesting situation, you know, with Paul Pierce coming out and making a statement like that in the first place. So, you know, so for me, 
you know, I think if Paul Pierce is still salty, then okay. But I'm going to tell you this. It is absolutely hilarious when you see social media roast this man. Because they be on Paul Pierce, boy. They be on him. They, man, let me tell you something, boy. Paul Pierce can't say nothing. Hey, don't forget, he did say that thing like, like about a few months ago talking about I had a better career than the way, way. I better than the way. Boy, people were on Paul. It was like, Paul, what? You know what, Paul? You, you, you about to get roasted for that. Oh, boy, it was funny. So, Paul keeps saying controversial things. It gets people up in a uproar. So, makes things funny. But coming up next, I'm going to break down the Eastern Conference playoff matchups that would currently, if they started the season today, resumed it today. The matchups of what I would think would happen to all those matchups. All that right here and more on the podcast. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, we discussed the beef between Paul Pierce and LeBron James. How Paul Pierce does not put LeBron James in his top five because he says... He never built a team up from the from the ground up, and I have to disagree with Mr. Paul Pierce. LeBron had built Cleveland up. He didn't just build up a team. He built up a city. Nobody else could say that. Remember, Cleveland doesn't have a historical franchise like Boston had. All right? Cleveland has always been the doormat of the NBA. And LeBron made them relevant and put them on the national stage. We also talked about how... Just basically, Tom Dibbs was looking over all his options and seeing what's out there for him in terms of being a head coach. It looks like he looks like he feels like he's going to be back in the league next year as a head coach, and he just has to fit the destination that suits him best. But now we're going to break down the Eastern Conference playoff matchups. And we're going to do this because... NBA does resume. The perception is they will go right into playoffs. So I'm going to break down the playoff matchups and give you my thoughts on how long I would think the series would go and just what I think about the matchup in general. So obviously, in the Eastern Conference first round, it would be Bucks and Magic. Obviously, I think we all know this would probably be a sweep. The Magic are a terrible defensive team, and they can score offensively, but they are very hot and cold. You could say if the Magic have a great game offensively, and let's say Giannis and them are off because of a long layoff, it may be competitive early, or Magic might take the lead early, maybe give Milwaukee a scare. But if the Bucks can get their, their footing back under them again, I think they should be able to take care of business. Because one thing about this layoff that we had, we have to understand is that, remember, it's not like we've been playing games, we ain't play every week and we're coming back. It's We haven't played a game in months. Even coming off training camp, we haven't played an NBA game in months. We're going to be a little rusty at first. We're going to miss some shots we made months ago. So, in a way, every series to me has the potential for an upset. In the more evenly fought, fought matches, matchups, it's more about just which team is just more prepared and already on top of their game fastest. And matchups with, with teams that are supposed to be superior to a, to a team that's playing them, they could be on upsets because you just don't know how prepared they are compared to the team they played. Obviously, like I said, Orlando with Vucevic and you know DJ Augustine, Terrence Ross, Evan Fournier. They got some guys, but on paper, and if you look at how the season has gone, the Milwaukee Bucks should be able to take care of business like it's nothing and be able to pick up a 4-0 win at best five games Four, but I'm, I'm thinking everybody's going to go with four games moving forward. Next matchup. Heat and Pacers. 4-5 matchup. 
obviously this is probably can potentially be one of the more competitive matchups, obviously, of this round. Obviously, you know, Pacers healthy with Sabonis and Brogdon and Oladipo and Miles Turner going against Jimmy Butler, Bam and Abayo, Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn. You have a very good matchup right here. I think this series could easily go seven, but I'm going to go Heat. I'm going to go Heat in six. I'm going to go Heat in six. I think it would. I, I think there's a very strong chance though it could go seven. I think there's a very strong chance it could go seven. I don't. I don't think that you know both these teams are in a position where Indiana always plays you scrappy. Indiana always plays you hard. Indiana always plays you. You know. With 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 utmost play, I mean, listen. Remember, they pushed LeBron James with his last year of Cleveland seven games. They are a team that if you are not on it, they can beat you. Pacers could shock you. This probably is one of the one series that I mean, if it's a four or five matchup, so you always expect these series to always you could say go either way. And and I truly think maybe it could in this situation. Because of, like I said, you don't know which team's going to be more prepared coming off of the layoff that they're on right now. You really don't know which team's going to be more prepared, which team's going to be more ready to go, which team's going to be more ready to play. You know, it's just a matter of just preparation, who's been staying in shape, who's been shooting, and, and honestly... These are the type of series that your star has got to play. So Oladipo versus Butler. Whoever plays the best probably will get the series win. Next matchup. 3-6 matchup. Celtics at 76ers. If the season continued the way it was, let me tell you something. This could be the last series you see Ben Simmons and Jalen be playing together. Because I don't see them being the Boston Celtics. I think Boston would beat them in six games. And the 76ers kryptonite in the playoffs have been the Boston Celtics. And the Boston Celtics are probably the best team they've been in all those years playing the 76ers. But remember, coming into this, the 76ers were kind of eh, up and down. And Ben Simmons was nursing an injury too. And Embiid was coming back from injuries. And listen, this this might be the last time you see Embiid and Ben Simmons. If, if if they come out now now they may have the excuse of layoff happened so they weren't playing at their best if they lost to Boston and that might save them for another year but if if if, if they if they struggle in this series and do not play well and Boston embarrasses them I definitely can see that as the end of the 76ers with Embiid or Ben one of them is going to be gone. And so that's going to obviously be big moving forward. And I just want to put this little tidbit out there. Don't be surprised if the 76ers did decide to move on. Remember, the, 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 the Warriors have ammo to get Giannis, but they might have the ammo to also get Embiid. You offer up Simmons, potentially the first overall draft pick, the 76ers might, you know, you got Ben Simmons, you get Wiggins, maybe get draft Wiseman to replace Embiid, got you a young, talented three players with Tobias Harris still there. You still could be a very competitive team. Just saying, just saying. But I'll take the 70, I'll take the Celtics in six games. And the last matchup in the Eastern Conference, the 2 7 matchup, Raptors and Nets. Obviously, if Kyrie does not come back, I think this could be a four game, maybe five game series. If Kyrie goes back, I think five to six. But if Kyrie does not come back, I'm thinking four, four games, maybe five at most. The Raptors are a very well coached basketball team. Great defensively. They're good offensively. You know, they got guys who can beat you. Gasol hasn't played most of the season. He should be back. You know, and that'll be really one of the few times we've seen them be healthy all season. Obviously, Nets. No KD, no Kyrie, potentially. You know, Spencer Dinwiddie and Levert are probably going to have a very heroic effort, but 
I just think in terms of just team chemistry and team coaching, the Raptors would be the best in that situation. So I'm thinking at least a sweep, sweep the five games. And, you know, it's kind of like basically what I have with 76ers. They put up a fight, but it's not going to be good enough to get them over the top. Now, listen, Raptors have had, you know, the history of losing game ones. So maybe that's the game, the net net steal. They steal a game. Obviously, it would make the most sense, again, coming off a layoff. Teams haven't played in a while. You could maybe take a game early. And obviously, like I said, the Raptors historically in game ones have not been good at all. So obviously the potential is there for that to be the case. And if that does happen, then clearly it will definitely help make things more interesting. And like I said, if Kyrie can get back, I mean, Kyrie is someone, a guy, he's one, he's one of those players I think regardless if he hasn't played like that in a while, he can go out there and drop 40 on your head. If you let Kyrie be Kyrie. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens in the Eastern Conference playoffs. This, it, when, when the season resumes, you know, if they resume this in the next coming months. But coming up next, now we're going to switch to the Western Conference and discuss all four matchups, who I think is going to win, predictions, and what I think of each series. All that right here and more on the podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, we broke down the Eastern Conference side of the playoffs. As they started today, the current matchups. I gave you my predictions on the matchups. I had the Bucks winning their matchup against the Magic. I had the Heat winning their matchup against the Pacers. I had the Celtics winning their matchup against the Sixers. And I had the Raptors winning their matchup against Brooklyn. If you want to know how many how many games and what I thought of each matchup leading when it comes down to it, you want to go back listen to our last segment. Also, I had a little key tidbit that might come to fruition if the 76ers don't perform well and with that might smell for Jalen Embiid and the fact that that the Warriors are looking to add another star to their group and they have ammunition. Hmm. Never forget who told it to you first. But now, like I said, we're going to go to the Western Conference playoffs, and we're going to break down the matchups and what I think of each matchup. First matchup, Lakers and Grizzlies, baby. John Morant, LeBron James. I mean, listen, the Grizzlies have had a great story. They've had a great season. You know, listen, they weren't expected to be this good. Remember, they start the season not really, I think they were like six, seven games under 500. They were not that great. And then they were able to just get it together. They were able to, you know, the, the fans wrapped around John Morant. They have a lot of young players, Jerry and Jackson, Dylan Brooks. It's been working for them and they're, and they're in the playoffs right now. But the Lakers are just too good of a team. I think even coming back from the break, I think that the Lakers should be able to sweep the Grizzlies. Again, if anything, again, maybe five games. At best in this series, but I think Lakers are going to pretty much win this series in four. I just look at this. I just look at the matchups, and I just think, what matchup does Memphis have the advantage in? Maybe because I mean LeBron plays point, so you can't even say point guard. So where is really their advantage? Really, the Memphis likes to push the ball, but at the same time, the Lakers are such a big and lengthy defensive team. I just don't see. 
Memphis being able to score a lot of points. And remember, Memphis really isn't a great offensive team overall. If John Morant's really not getting it going, there's really nobody else on the Memphis Grizzlies you're scared of from a scoring perspective. John Morant's really the main guy who can really just get it going and score and really get the rest of his team going because of that. And as long as the Lakers can handle him, I think they'll be in good position to probably win this game and this series in four games and advancing to the conference semifinals. So now we have the 4-5 matchup. Jazz and Thunder. Very interesting matchup. I think this series could go 7. The Jazz, even though they're the 4th seed, have somewhat not played up to expectations as the Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell backcourt hasn't been as successful as expected. And they have had some liabilities offensively still. Obviously, the Thunder have exceeded expectations. And they're also one of the most clutch teams in the the NBA as they're excellent in fourth quarters. And they play great basketball with Chris Paul leading the charge, leading these guys. To me, this series could go either way. This could be a potential upset. And the Thunder go on to the next round, potentially. I, I think that really could happen. The Thunder are young, but they've shown they can play in big games. They've they've won games. They still have Steven Adams. Dennis Schroeder can play. Chris Paul can play. Danilo Algari can play. They got guys. They got guys. It's just a matter of... With the Jazz, you're coming off this break. You don't know about Gobert and Donovan Mitchell's playing relationship right now. Even though they say they're able to not think about it on the court... We will really truly see it when we when it's out there. And you just don't know where this Jazz team is. And so the Thunder, I'm 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 gonna go upset here. I'm gonna go Thunder and seven or Thunder and six. I think the Thunder are the most complete together team in the league right now in terms of this matchup. Between these two teams. Not in the league, between these two teams. And I think that could be what helps them get over the top of the Jazz. Because we just we don't know what what, 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 st- what state the Jazz are in right now with everything, with their two best players and everything, and the injuries and all of that. So that's going to be very interesting to see moving forward what, what happens, you know, with, with, with this situation. The next matchup, Nuggets and Rockets. Obviously, again, another matchup to me that could have an upset. Because Denver's not a team that you look at outside of maybe the Grizzlies, you can definitively say, yes, they're beating this team for sure. If anything, obviously the top two teams, you think they're losing to. So the Rockets have always been this team that you don't know. They may be six, but they could be the third best team in the West. And obviously, yes, they're playing their small ball. So obviously the key to the series would be Joker. Jokic has to have a big series to take advantage of it. He has to be averaging close to 30 a game. He has to. Denver has a very a lot of talent, but it, it, and I think that's why this matchup is going to be so interesting because it, it it's just going to be interesting whose players just play better. Whose players just gets gets on it sooner? Like this is again, Houston has the playoff experience here. They have the experience. They have everything. They could win this series. If 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 Houston wins, I could see them winning it in six games. And I might go with another upset and go with Houston here in six games over the Nuggets, because I we don't know how the how a young team like the Nuggets is going to handle such a long layoff. From playing and Russell and James Harden are playoff battle tested, so there's a lot of advantages just from from that perspective for the Rockets is against the Nuggets. The Nuggets can beat the Rockets clearly, but I just if I had to put my trust coming off a layoff, I put more trust into the Rockets. Plus, the reason why I also trust is because Houston style of play is much simpler. They know what they're doing. When we start the season back up, we're shooting threes and we're getting to the paint. You know, that's that's literally it. They just got to get their rhythm down with their shots. And I mean, listen, they're up and down any night. So there is no definitive 
you know, oh, they're not in sync. You know, yeah, they might miss a lot of shots, but the next game they can make their shots. So I'm, I'm going to go Houston here in another upset in the Western Conference. And then the 2-7 matchup, Clippers and Mavericks. So I look at this matchup and think to myself and say, well, I think Clippers got this in five, probably five. I think Dallas will get a game. Now the Clippers have to be careful because Dallas is one of the best offensive teams in the league. So if they don't be on their P's and Q's defensively, Dallas can outscore the Clippers and that can maybe push it to six. But I think the Clippers know the matchup they're going into. They know Kristoff, Luka, they can play. Listen, I, I think they're ready to, to, you know, go into this game, match up, and prove a lot of people that they're better than Lakers. And so they're going to go out here and they're going to handle business against the Dallas Mavericks and, and be able to win. Because Dallas is a bad defensive team. So if, if, the, if the Clippers could play great defensively and then be good offensively, they should still be able to score over 110 points on this Mavericks defense. And that could be how they really handle the Dallas Mavericks throughout the entire series. So I, I, I definitely see Clippers winning this series in five games. I just think Luka and Kristoff Porzingis will give them at least a game. And, and I think that they're going to be able to come away with the victory here and just be able to come away with the win. So that's going to be a big thing right there for me, you know, looking at this series. And if you want to go back over my picks, I, I got the Lakers winning in four, Thunder winning in seven, Rockets winning in six, and the Clippers winning in five. So those are my choices in the Western Conference as obviously, like I said, we don't know how any of these teams are going to look coming off the break. So like I said, it's going to be definitely in the hands of a lot of team star players and, 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 and just all the workouts you've still been doing or trying to do up to this point to really get them ready to be at, 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 as close as they can. Because to me, I feel like they won't be their their full selves as teams till at least the conference finals, where you'll see probably a higher increase in consistent basketball, in my opinion. But coming up next, I'm going to go ahead and continue this and then talk about the conference semifinal matchups, who I think would win, and then how many games and why. All that right here and more on the podcast. Are you looking to get your college football fixed? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. SMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, I broke down the Western Conference first round matchup. And now we're going to go into the Western and Eastern Conference semifinal matchups. I will conclude this in my last segment of my next show. But I'm just going to go ahead and do these now with you guys. Just to have some continuity moving forward. Obviously, if you didn't know who I, if you skip past, maybe you you didn't really uh, want to hear, or maybe you missed something. Obviously, I have technically by matchups now in the semifinals. In the Western Conference, it would be Lakers and Thunder because I had the Thunder upsetting the Jazz, and Rockets Clippers as I would have the Rockets upsetting the Nuggets. In the Eastern Conference, I would have Bucks Heat, and then I would have Celtics Raptors, which would be the projected people to win their series. So. We're going to start again with the Eastern Conference, and we're going to talk about the Bucks and Heat. Now, obviously, this is a very interesting matchup because the Heat are one of the few teams that play Milwaukee really well. I don't want to say they have the kryptonite to Giannis in the team, but they the matchups don't overwhelmingly favor the Milwaukee Bucks. 
So it definitely gives Miami more of an opportunity to win. The, the biggest thing for Miami is that they're going to have to get Jimmy Butler and Bam and Adebayo to really have big series. Bam's going to play one of his best series if they're going to beat the Milwaukee because Milwaukee is not going down without a fight. And Milwaukee is usually one of the most dominant teams in, in the entire NBA. They added Equidala. They added all these guys. They have a lot of guys they can throw at Giannis. And I think they have a good constructed team to play with everybody else on the team. Now, now I'm still going to go with Bucks and six, but I I definitely could see the Heat really pushing this to seven and giving Milwaukee a huge scare. Obviously, if somehow the Bucks lost, that would probably damage their hopes of keeping Giannis because he has to look at it like, oh, if I lose to the Heat, then clearly the Milwaukee's not the best team for me to be with. And that could open the door for him to go to, to the Golden State Warriors. Obviously, since it'll be the second round of the playoffs, obviously these teams will be a little bit more in sorts with each other, more the chemistry will be back already, or getting closer to being fully back. So you'll probably see these teams play at the top of their actual level. So it'll be very interesting to see what ends up happening with this Obviously, if, if my series predictions goes as planned, the, the Bucks are going to have a lot of rest coming into that second series if they sweep Orlando and the Heat get taken to seven. So that's going to be interesting. But I got Bucks and six. Then I have the third seeded Celtics versus the two Raptors. I think Celtics are winning this game in about six as well. I think the Celtics just have more firepower than, than the Raptors. I think they're just as good defensively, but better with more scores on the offensive end. Remember, Boston has four guys and give you 20. Gordon, Tatum, Brown, Kimba. The Raptors, Lowry, hit and miss. Van Fleet is probably more consistent to get you 20 than Kyle Lowry. Because Van Fleet is usually more consistent. Abaka can give you 15 here. Marcus All can give you 14, 15 here. Siakam's the guy who really can like get you get you 20 a game, 25 a game, but who else can join him in helping him, you know, really score with with the Boston Celtics? And I think that's why with the Raptors as well, what you see from them is what they are. You don't there's not really another gear to the Raptors where it's just like they're gonna go to that next level. In the playoffs. Where Boston, you feel like with Tatum especially becoming a superstar as we saw before the season was canceled. You definitely feel like that Boston has that next that next gear they can go to. Which will help them be able to reach that success point of potentially making it to the finals as a dark horse final team. As a lot of people project. But I do have the Celtics beating the Raptors in six games. I just think the rap, the Celtics have too much firepower. And listen, this is also going to be an underrated great coaching matchup between Brad Stevens and Nick Nurse. Raptors are going to play hard, and these are going to be very competitive six games. But I, I just see the Celtics coming out on top because they have more at the end of the day than the Raptors, in my opinion. So now we'll go to the Western Conference. And so we have Lakers and Thunder. Now, I think this series will go about five. I think... The Thunder will get a game. I just think, again, the Lakers are more superior to the Thunder. I think this is where their historic, fantastic, unexpected season ends. And five games to the Lakers. I I think it will be a tough five. They're going to give them a fight. I think it's going to be the first four games will be a fight. That fourth game is going to be close. If they lose, you'll usually see young teams, fifth game, they just come out unexpired. Knowing there's really no way we can beat this team three times in a row and maybe get blown out in the fifth game. But... I think it'll be a competitive first four. And, you know, listen. I believe this is the first time in, 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 I don't, I don't know if they ever played each other when the, when the Chris Paul was in New Orleans. Actually, they weren't even part of the East. Cause, cause Chris Paul has been on the Western Conference the whole year. This will be the first time LeBron and Chris Paul play in the playoffs against each other. So that's going to obviously be a little bit of a storyline itself. You know, Chris Paul, you know, Breaking this third team to compete against LeBron James' team. Obviously, knowing he's under man, but I know Chris Paul is going to probably go out there. And remember, Chris Paul's been rested. He'll probably go out there thinking, listen, it's not like I have like 
82 games plus playoff games on my body right now. I, I've been resting for a few months. I need to go out here and give my all against LeBron and them and hope for the best. Give them a run for their money. And I think that's what the kind of series we're going to get here. A very competitive five-game series as I have the Lakers winning in five games. I just think LeBron James and Anthony Davis will just be too much, though it will be a very good matchup between Anthony Davis and Steven Adams in the post. I think that would be a very good matchup whenever they are on each other. As obviously we know Steven Davis is not a center, but sometimes they might go small and Steven Adams will be on the floor. So that would be a very interesting matchup to look at when when you watch those two teams play. And, you know, again, since I feel like the Western Conference would be in Vegas, you know, obviously, it'd be, it, like I say, it would be, be exciting to see what happens in that playoff series between the two teams. And then the last best up of the Western Conference will be Clippers and Rockets. I think Clippers got this game at six. I think they match up very well against Houston's small ball lineup because they're not a really big team themselves. I don't think you'll see a lot of Zubak this series. You'll see a lot of Harold, and Harold's probably going to dominate in this series. And you still got Paul George who can guard James, and you got Kawhi who can guard James. Patrick Beverly's on Russell. We know about their rivalry. I, I, but I, I just think Clippers match up with Houston really well. I think Houston will be able to get two games, but I think that'll be about it. I think Clippers will pro- probably win this series in six and be able to pick up the W in the series. And obviously, like I said, I just I feel like, you know, Clippers, again, are a very deep team. They can throw multiple bodies at James, multiple bodies at Russell. They have multiple guys who can score. And, you know, it, it, it's just one of those things you can tell that it is, it's, it's really going to be interesting moving forward. Very interesting moving forward. So... If you want to go back on my picks, I have Lakers beating the Thunder in five. I have Rockets, I mean Clippers beating the Rockets in six. I have Bucks beating the Heat in six. And I have the Celtics beating the Raptors in six as well. So those are my predictions for the semifinals of both conferences. And so that would make my Western Conference final matchups. Lakers and Clippers like everybody wants and expects. And Bucks and Celtics, as that's going to be a very, very interesting series, if I say so myself, and seeing what happens. So, it'll be, like I said, it'll be very interesting to me. But, thank you for tuning in. This was the GSMC Basketball Podcast here on the GSMC Podcast Network. I was your host, Bryce Lewis. Thank you for tuning in. Another great day for us. I appreciate all the listens. Don't forget to leave a review. Leave us uh, some stars, four or five stars. Don't also forget to follow us on social media. If you also are someone who maybe is interested in advertising with us and help me give me some library money, you can advertise with the GSMC podcast. Also should be in the link uh, below. Uh, And like I said, thank you for listening on any platform that you're potentially listening to us on and letting me be a part of your day. Thank you and have a good day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program